Hello friends. Today's art lesson is how to draw a pine cone. Now the important part about this lesson isn't so much about drawing a pine cone as much as it is drawing from nature. I've gone in my yard and I found a pine cone and I'm going to use it as my guide of what to observe and what to notice as I'm learning how to draw a pine cone. We're going to be using a piece of paper and a pencil. You don't need to go ahead and find a pine cone. I'll have the video. Uh, the video will show the pine cone on the paper so that you can observe it. But I hope this lesson gives you an idea of how to take something from nature, maybe a leaf or a flower or something else that you find out on your nature walk and draw it from life. So we're gonna be drawing a pine cone today. We're gonna to be practicing um, the observation. We're gonna be practicing some shading and I hope you guys have a lot of fun. Let's get started. So for me to draw a pine cone, I'm actually going to use a real pine cone as our reference today. Now I just pulled this out of my yard and it's not a perfect pine cone. You can see it's a little curved. It's actually still a little bit wet and um, here it's early spring. So this has probably been on the ground for a really long time. So I've got some dirt that's falling. I'm going to put this off to the side so that I can take a really close look at my pine cone. Now you'll see how a pine cone has really simple shapes and it forms a pattern. So a pine cone shape, uh, the, the individual different pieces of this pine cone, let's, let's figure out what they look like. So the very top, you can see how it's, it's like an old, like a, it's got a curved top like this, but it's not a perfect curve. In nature, everything is organic and has variation, which is what makes it so beautiful. So it has these tops that are curved, but have some variation to them. I'm just gonna practice drawing those shapes. Now on the underside, if I were to look at maybe one of these in its entirety, it comes down and it has a little bit of a point. This is where it's going to attach to the actual inner portion of the pine cone. So we have this interesting little curved top part and then it comes to somewhat of a point down here. Now we're never going to be drawing this entire shape because they overlap each other like shingles on a roof. And this is going to be helpful though as we look at this shape. Eventually as we finish our pine cone we are going to observe these points right here and we're gonna draw those in like this and be able to see the three-dimensionality of that particular shape. But let's go ahead and draw this pine cone. Now before we get out another piece of paper, this is gonna be our practice. We're gonna look at the pattern of this pine cone. So we can see how the entire shape that we've drawn is easiest to see on the bottom and then they overlap on top of each other until it comes to a point at the top. So as we draw our pine cone, we are going to be starting with these pieces at the bottom and we are going to draw them up like this. I'm doing a really simple sketch so you get an idea. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. So we have our new piece of paper and we have our model of a pine cone right here. In order for me to know where I'm going, I want to draw just a basic shape of what I'm going to be outlining today. I am not going for a perfectly realistic pine cone. Uh, that would be a lesson for another day. I'm going for the basic shape and components of this pine cone. So I've got my, I've got my basic, my basic shape that I'm going for. All right, now. We have already practiced drawing the particular shape of the pine cone, and we're gonna start from the very bottom. Now, at the very bottom, you're not gonna exactly see the whole shape because it starts from way underneath. But we're gonna start like this. This is, um, this is what my pine cone kind of sort of looks like, and you can draw whatever you want. But what we're gonna do is we are gonna use these rounded tops as our guide for drawing the next layer of, um, of this pine cone. 
So from the point, the highest point of this pine, these pine cone pieces right here, I'm going to draw the next one. It's going to go up and then down a little bit, then up and then down a little bit. And then here, up and then down a little bit. This is going to be going off to the side. Now when you get to the edge, you're going to be looking more of the, at the side of each particular, um, I don't know what they're called, you guys, a, a leaf of the pine cone. I should be looking up the botanical term. Um, <laughs> you'll have to forgive me. Let's just call these the different uh, leaves of the pine cone. So now we have these. this next layer. We're going to look at the highest point of that layer and just off to the side of that highest point we're going to go up again and down up again and down up again and down at this point i'm not even really looking at my pine cone because my eye is going to start getting lost um, and i'm because i'm not drawing this perfectly realistic i don't want to get too lost i want to mostly follow the pattern that i've created here so we are going to start we're going to look at that uppermost part of the pine cone. We're going to start, we're going to go up again and then down, touch just right next to the highest part. Just right next to the highest part, we're going to go up again and then down, up again and then down. And this guy needs a side piece. So then we're going to start up again and then down, up again and then down. Now you'll see that my lines aren't perfectly straight, nor are they perfectly round. I'm letting it have kind of an organic undulating feel, which is allowing me to have some variation. So it's not going to look perfectly uniform. We don't want it to look perfectly uniform. Let's keep going up again. It's going to have a little few bumps and then down up again and then down. Let's start that again, up again and then down up again. Now if you get lost in yours, if your pattern goes a little bit off, that's okay. You can always add these little side pieces because the, you know, these, the pine cone leaves go all the way around and that will give you another starting point if you can't find a starting point off to the side. And here. Now as I'm going, I'm just going to keep going. This can get really Uh, methodical and mindful. It's really great. You see how I kind of messed up here. I actually didn't start and end from the highest point of those two. So I'm going to erase that. It's perfectly okay to erase, but sometimes if your mind gets off track and you, you lose track of where you are, it's okay. All right, let's start again. You'll notice how these pieces are going to start getting a little smaller. My pine cone pieces um, are bigger in the middle, and then as I get up to the point, it actually gets um, a little bit, a little bit smaller. All right, let's add those pieces. My pine cone has more leaves than this one does, and that's okay. I'm mostly practicing this idea of shape upon shape. Now, as I get up to the top, these want these want these points. They want to kind of wing out just a little bit. So I'm going to just wing those out. And what this will allow me to do is to finish it off actually a little bit nicer. So I've got maybe two up here and one up here. And now we have our pine cone shape. Um, let's just gently, if you have some of those guiding lines, I'm just going to gently erase those for now. I'm not going to get rid of all of it. But now I'm going to draw in my little points that I've got here. You can stop here if you want. That looks a lot like a pine cone. But if you want to get a little bit more detailed, you can draw in these points. So without looking at this exactly, because I haven't drawn this exactly like this, I'm going to draw in my little points. And the way that I'm going to draw it in, um, I'm actually going to not draw a full circle or an oval. Those, To me, these look like little ovals. And this is where you can see the three-dimensionality of that pine cone leaf where it protrudes out to a point. But because I'm drawing an impression of a pine cone, I'm 
actually going to just draw more like a U. And the reason is because there's a little bit more shadow on the underside. And I'm going to just draw that point at its darkest part. So let's give each one of those individual pieces a little bit of, I'm not drawing a perfect U, I'm kind of just like the tops of those pine cones, letting it be really flexible. So I'm holding my pencil really loosely, pressing down at the beginning, but then letting go, pressing down at the beginning, but then letting go, press down and let go, press down and let go. We're going to keep going. Isn't this amazing how nature makes these incredible patterns? I'm going down here because I forgot these ones on the side, and that's okay. As we finish this one up, I'm going to make these points just a little smaller because actually the points uh, change position and they get um, because of the curve of this pine cone, we actually see the points more at the top. To finish off this pine cone, I want to give it a little bit of shading. Now, when I'm shading, I don't want my shadows to be too dark because they would blend right in with the line and I wouldn't even see my line anymore. I want my shadows to be really light. And I'm holding my pencil with a very, very soft grip. There's several ways to hold a pencil. There's no one right way to hold a pencil, so I'm not going to tell you how you should hold it. I'm holding it, if I'm holding it this way, I'm going to hold it really, really lightly. If I'm holding it this way, I'm going to also just let my hand be the guide, let the pencil be the guide, and I'm using a little bit of the side of the pencil. I'm not using the tip. If I use the tip, I'm going to get really skinny lines and you'll be able to see the lines more. If I hold the pencil from the side or hold the pencil from the side like this, I'm going to get more of the side of the pencil. See how I can get a bigger surface area of that um, graphite. So that's how I'm going to shade. Now I'm going to start from the bottom and the, the reason why I'm going to shade it is because I want to be able to see each individual piece and in this pine cone can you see how there's a shadow on the bottom two edges of this pine cone. Now shadows can show up lots of different places because of wherever the light source is forming. But because these pieces tuck into each other, there's a natural shadow on this piece from the piece on top of it. And that's going to be right on this bottom edge. You see that shadow? So we're going to do a shadow on the bottom edge very lightly of each one of those pine cone pieces. Look at that. This is very, very light and it's not filling up a lot of that part, but it's just going to go along that top edge so that you can tell each one of those pine cone leaves is on top of the next one. And this is going to add just a little bit of three dimensionality. If you haven't practiced shading before, this is a really good uh, exercise because the forms are relatively uniform throughout this. I'm going to go ahead and keep shading, keep shading like this. And I don't know about you, but it becomes really relaxing. <laughs> to do shading after shading after shading. Now each piece, if you haven't noticed, slightly different. There's variation, so it's not a perfect shape each time, but I'm just going to follow the, your eye might tell you the bottom of this shape, or your eye might tell you the top of that one and the top of that shape. Whichever way you like to think about it, doesn't really matter. And as you're shading, again, you're going to use the side of the pencil. I'm not pressing very hard, um, but you might notice that one side of your pencil kind of wears out and you want to rotate your pencil and use a different side. You can do that. You can see how even the shading looks a little bit different when you rotate your pencil because maybe your pencil is 
sharper on one side than another. As it gets more dull, it will blend a little better. I am not being very detailed. I'm just giving a little bit of this shadow and shading. I'm going to go up and up and up and up. And I forgot one little piece right here. I forgot that piece there. I forgot that one there. You can see where I forgot my pieces. And we're almost done. Because I've done this shading and because I've got these little U shapes of the point, I want to add a little bit of a darker shadow at the top of those U shapes so that I get the sense that the point of that pine cone leaf has some texture, has some color to it. You can see how it's even a little bit of a darker color on that pine cone. So I'm not being uniform. I'm just giving a little bit of a choop, choop. You can see it's not even really a shape. It's just an impression of a darker coloration like that. You don't have to do it if you're too worried about messing up your line. You can just leave it like that, but I'm gonna just add a little bit of coloration here so that you can really get a sense of the two different colors in your pine cone. And there you have a drawing of a pine cone. <laughs>